the number that jumped out at me was 10% food at home. Yeah. I mean, just the average American family paying 10% more to eat at home today yeah. than they did a year ago. Uh, they cannot sustain that for a very long period of time. No. And my fear is all of the things that we talked about previously around the wheat prices, fertilizer. Mm -hmm. We even got uh, in the U.S. the wheat market. Uh, we started to get some of the readings, and and it's much lower amount of the wheat is actually high quality than they had predicted, et cetera. Wow. And so you start to like stack all this up, and you're like, man, if food prices all of a sudden we get to 12, 15, God forbid, 20% increase in food at home, yeah, that's going to be bad. This is how you get like like riots and pandemics, right? Like we're already starting to see it. I think like Sri Lanka was having protests, Pakistan. Well, Sri Lanka, yeah. uh, the central bank just uh, said they're bankrupt. The the so all right, let, let's go one by one here. Yeah. So the food thing, I think, was, was very eye opening to me. I was like, oh my god, like this could, even though it may not have a material impact on CPI itself, if everything else starts to come down on a percentage basis, and let's just say that we'll give the uh, the the anti inflation crowd. Uh, the assumption that, okay, inflation peaks in March, yeah. which do you agree with that or disagree? You think that it's going to peak? Year over year, it could uh, because base effects really materially steepen in April, but that doesn't mean the momentum is just dying down. Correct. Once you get past the base effects, you're still going to be at a very high level of inflation. That's the problem with the momentum. Yes. So I, I, that's generally my idea as well. It's like yeah. people are going to start to now just go headline numbers and they're yeah. going to lose the nuance. The context, uh, yeah. and, and going into midterm elections, we're going to have politicians being like, Victorious! Totally, yeah. <laughs> right. Victorious, we're at six and a half instead of eight and a half, you know? And, uh, and, it, and if we didn't have base effect, it would really be like 12. <laughs> totally, 100%. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> right? So, uh, so I think that's a big problem. When we then go and we look uh, around the world, I recently wrote about it. Uh, I know Marty Bent wrote about it. A, a couple of different people uh, is we now have had two central banks slash governments, however you want to break it down, uh, basically say checkmate, like, like game over, uh, without restructuring because we had Lebanon, mm -hmm. which for two years now, they've been having riots in the streets. The, yeah. uh, the currency has been devalued significantly. There's been more than 50% contraction in the economy over the last two years. Like yeah. just horrible situation for people on the ground. Totally. They basically are like, hey, we're done, right? Uh, and now they're coming on like, oh, we're not really bankrupt, but like, you know, wh whatever spin they're putting on it, but like they're bankrupt. Yeah. Sri Lanka, which since 1948, they've never had an issue paying their external debt service. Wow. 1948 till today, never had one issue. They are very unique in that obviously you get all the undisciplined monetary and fiscal policy over the last decade. Yep. Going into 2020, you then get hit with the pandemic. Pandemic was important for Sri Lanka because of high tourism. Oh, yeah. All of a sudden, if they don't have tourism, right, GDP, all that stuff, big issue. Then they get all of the uh, race between central banks to devalue their currency right, on a relative basis. Then they get the uh, hit of uh, the Russia-Ukraine situation, mm -hmm. right? And you go step by step by step. And you're like, these people have just been throwing curveball after curveball after curveball. And uh, I think it was Marty's point, which I thought was really good, was he was like, look, the weakest fall first. And so oh, yeah. Lebanon, Sri Lanka, like, oh, yeah. like they're not the Fed, mm -hmm. right? The Fed has got like all the firepower and these guys basically are knife fighting. Yep. The question is, are the two outliers or are we going to see more fall? And and again, they won't be Western developed nations where p most of the people who are watching this show have to worry about like, oh my God, is my central bank going to go bankrupt? Yeah. But there's still, I don't know how many people are in Sri Lanka, but there's millions of people that live there. Totally. Right? That are negatively affected by this. And so like, do we see two, three, four, five more? I, I, like, how do you underrate Is, is there this? a real material difference than a poor person living on $2 a day in Sri Lanka than a poor person living on $2 a day in India, Lebanon, Nigeria, Morocco? Like, is it really? No. This is the problem. And, and this is this is why I don't, I think the sort of inflation around narrative on Wall Street is missing the point, which is what's going to cause food and energy prices to stop going up? Are we going to get a glut of energy or a glut of wheat, a glut of corn coming from somewhere anytime soon? Because no, if we don't, the supply and demand will dictate that the price has to continue to rise, you know, to crowd out the marginal buyer, to crowd out the marginal demand. And so it's my point. It's like we're forgetting that, okay, yeah, the inflation might peak year over year for a convenient narrative in the U.S. equity market or U.S. bond market. But that doesn't mean we're not continuing to build the risk that we see protests, not just in Sri Lanka, but in Detroit. In St. Louis, in Minnesota, and to, you know, people are poor. Poor people, this is really, is a really bad time, man. Hey, you, did you like this video? Great. We make five of them a day and post them here on this channel. Make sure you subscribe, like the video, and see you next time.